Wisdom and Wellness family, welcome to a special episode. Today we are in partnership with Dove and we are having a conversation that is very close to my heart. I think if you've followed my content, you will know I speak a lot about my insecurities. I speak a lot about my skin. I speak a lot about vulnerability. And today we have three incredible women and we're going to talk all things skin, our relationship with our skin and the, and the role it plays in who we become. It feels like it's one of those things like, how can skin um, come together with who we become? But I've seen it in my own life, how I feel about my skin and my confidence plays a role in the person I am and how I perform. Starting here, we're going to start with the youngest. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Chilling with Butlali, who's an award-winning poet, actress, speaker, presenter, and her rocket to fame launched at the age of 11. Girl, you've yeah. been doing this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you And for then us. we've got Lachelle we met in Cape Town. She's a fashion and lifestyle content creator, passionate about creating a safe space for all women. Okay. Hi. <laughs> I almost want to say, do you want to introduce your earrings? My penis. <laughs> oh my Hi, everyone. Oh my this God. is my penis. We're going to smell it. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, we've got Tanda Naves, a mother of three, wife, and you probably know her as modern Zulu mom. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Where does the Zulu come from? Okay, so I am Zulu. Okay. Um, and like traditional yes. kind of Zulu girl. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, I think with my blog in the, in the beginning, when I was starting my blog, I was just like, okay, now I'm seeing all these, you know, American blogs. Yeah. Okay. How can I bring the South African element into it? Okay. And I just thought, oh, yeah. Okay, guys, we're going to start with icebreakers. I've got them listed here. So I'm just going to go around. Okay. You get up and go song. Oh, it's that boo thing. That one that's like, it's a big you one. You know thing. Oh, you know what you're doing. No, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's such a vibe. No, yeah. You do, TikTok, you're on TikTok. TikTok. Do you know what I'm on TikTok. Why don't I know? What side of TikTok are you on? Um, go solo and button. Go solo and button. Okay. If you no longer had to sleep, right? Like mm -hmm. sleep wasn't necessary. How would you spend those eight hours? Oh my goodness! Probably just like trying out different foods. I'm like a like I like to eat For eight and hours. Binge eat, yeah. No, That's I'd be like mukbang style, trying out different foods. I don't know why. Really? Like that'd be me. Yeah. Is that what you do when you like travel? Yes. And you're just yes. Trying yes. I have like the bits and pieces. I want to order at least eight dishes and try them all. Oh yeah. gosh! Love it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Favorite emoji or meme when you're texting? Uh, definitely. Yeah, oh, describe it. <laughs> I think it's the one where the face is melting. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I always say that when I'm saying something dodgy. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. Or I'm like saying it. something shady, usually to my sister, and then I'll be like, mm. always to the yeah. sister. <laughs> <laughs> the sisters know all the secrets. Okay. Yeah. But Lali, if you were seated on a plane beside mm -hmm. your favorite celebrity or someone you look up to, who would it be? And what oh, would you ask them? hard. Oh, my goodness. That's hard. I know. Um, I think I'd go with Oprah Winfrey. What like, would you say? Like, I don't know what I'd ask her. Oh my goodness. Or would you just like freeze and like hope? Yeah, I feel like I would. And then I'd just be like, I'm a really huge fan. <laughs> <laughs> You've wasted all this time. <laughs> but no, yeah, I think it'd be Oprah Winfrey. Okay. Yeah. Last Maybe one. I'd ask her what her favorite book is. Oh my goodness. I love her like book mm, reviews okay. and everything. Yeah. yeah. Last one here, um, Tando. If you drop everything right now work-wise and go on a road trip, where would you go? Oh my gosh. It has to be Blue Waters. Where's that? No, it has to be a place worth the water. Oh, okay. oh, 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 oh. So I'll probably choose. Uh, I've seen pictures of Cancun in Mexico. Um, road trip. Road you trip. Drive, you drive, oh, driving oh, to driving Mexico. Day. Oh, wow. Um, I've <laughs> never been to Clarence. Where's Clarence? It's free state? state, yeah, free state. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah lots of new Yeah, it looks, yeah, yeah, it's lovely. No blue oh, waters there, things. but yeah, lots of nature and okay. very scenic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Last, last one now. Okay. Uh, what's the first thing you do when you wake up? Oh, it's bad. Your phone. I check my oh. phone. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I check my phone. But also then I will pick up my Kindle. Like I've been oh, yeah, reading a lot. Do you, read, do you prefer um, like online reading, not like pages? I used to. I was so particular about only wanting to read a physical book because yeah. I just loved the process of it. Yeah. But then my husband was, I think, didn't know what to buy me for Christmas one year. And then he just bought me a Kindle and I was like, well, I have it. Aww. I'm not, not going to use it. Yeah. And now it's my favorite thing really? that I own. Oh. Honestly, it's the best. I've also bought like 
random little accessories. I'm like one of those Kindle people now. Yeah. What accessories? I didn't even know so it's a I didn't know you could get that. No, me too. I, know I thought there's just yeah. an app. I thought there's just an app, the Kindle app. I didn't know there's an actual <gasps> Kindle. Kindle. Yeah. Buy it on it's like a little tablet. tablet. It's, best. it's so. Tablet. Sp- I have it in my bag, yeah. right over there. No, I brought I, it with me because I, I read it in, in the line wherever I am. I'm just whip it out. <laughs> and what are you reading? What are you currently reading? Um, I am currently reading. There's a Magnolia Parks series. So there's like four books in the series. Mm-hmm. And it just follows this group of friends. It's basically like Gossip Girl, but like the UK version okay. of Gossip Girl. Nice. Sounds interesting. It is yeah. really cool. <laughs> Guys, let's get into our uh, conversation. And I'm going to ask um, all three of you this uh, specific question. But when you were younger, what kind of relationship did you have with your skin? And I'll start by sharing my story. And I just, it's, 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 it's actually insane how as you get older, like you remember events in your life. Yeah. And I remember a specific moment at like, I think around age of five, six, and I got into a fence, right? And my whole skin was scarred, like scarred, like badly scarred. And I remember thinking, geez, is this how I'm going to look for the rest of my life? Sure. And I remember, like, I pinpoint that moment. I'm like, I think that's like the first time I actually thought about my skin and how it matters. Mm. So I'm going to throw the question to you guys. Um, what kind of relationship did you have with your skin? Uh, I think... Sure. With my skin, similar to you, actually, I actually had a fall as well. And I have a scar that you can still see yeah. on my face. Uh, and I think I was, I was around 11. Sure. Um, so I was quite conscious of that. But another thing I was conscious of, I think, was the complexion of my skin. Really? Uh, yeah, I was just aware of it. Yeah. Um, just because it was, it was not, you know, something, it was something that I think people constantly commented on okay. mm. you know like oh your sister and your mother are fairer than you oh. um but I think being going into my teenagers then um you know obviously you start having your pimples and you start having your pigmentation and your marks so it was always something I was like conscious of yeah um but yeah thankfully I think after children um uh, I think my hormones just balanced out yeah it's uh, wild to me that you should mention that you're conscious of your skin color because your family was fairer and I'm yeah. like looking at you. No, I know, <laughs> oh, I know, right? You a pretty yeah. um, light-skinned girl, but it, you realize that it actually exists within families. And in the time we grew yeah. up in, it was like such a, a, a big thing that your skin is this color and this one's skin is this color. Mm. But yeah, Butlali, your uh, relationship with your skin? Yeah, um, I think I, I really didn't have a positive relationship with my skin. I had tons of insecurities, but also mm. I think for me, a lot of that was contributed because of bullying. So I was bullied a lot like mm. through my primary years, right? Um, and I think similar to you, then teenagehood really for me is where I was fully conscious because I used to be a dancer. So most of the time when I leotards because it's ballet and this, and then I started to have stretch marks mm. um, and my skin was breaking out and everything. And that's when I'd even pick on my skin, like yeah. physically, you know? So yeah, I think... Growing up, primary and teenage years was not the best relationship. Sure. Um, and then a lot of the work happened then going into like later high school and varsity years. When you think of your time, like even growing up, do you think of it as it was such a sad time of my life? Or are you able to say, actually, I had a great childhood outside of the bullying and all of that? Or is your whole life kind of attached to while well, I was just bullied and I was not confident in my skin? Mm, sure, that's that's a really good question. Um, I think the thing for me is I almost put everything into sections, right? It was like, I was like, I don't think I'm the prettiest girl and I don't feel beautiful, but I'm smart and I'm mm. talented. So these, these are fine. Like yeah. I'm okay with not being beautiful, which I think no child should have to feel like that. Sure. But I think it didn't fully then affect my confidence because I was like, at least I'm getting great grades, you know, and at least I'm, I think I'm really good at, like, my talents and my mm. gifts and everything else. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I think it was a, yeah. It's so crazy that you should say that. I remember even at the Dove, at the the self-confidence um, event that we had with yes. Dove and a, lady, yes. a girl stood up and I think she said something like that, that I might not be the most beautiful girl, but I mm. at least know I'm smart. And it's like... Yeah. That shouldn't be a yeah. thing. Like no, yeah. one, so sad. It's so sad that anyone should have to feel like I know I'm not pretty, 
But but it's yeah. 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 And yeah. it's normally an external source, right? It it's is. not necessarily something your parents tell you mm-hmm. uh, or you know, it's something you tell yourself. It's yeah. mostly someone else has said something. And then you just about, mm-hmm. like start believing it exactly. that okay, it means I'm not I'm not, exactly. I'm not the pretty yeah, girl. Not, and that's fine. Fit, yeah. Fit in here. And the harsh reality is it could be a random little kid at school yeah. and it's something that just sticks with you. Yeah. 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 And like your brain then it continues to it. tell you that, even yeah. though it's like one random little kid at school in primary school that you're still carrying with you in your whole life. It becomes an identity. Yeah. And your relationship with your skin? Um, I mean, it was an interesting one. I started out when I was a baby, I was covered in eczema. Like, I was a cute baby once the eczema, like, (laughs) moved itself (laughs) off me to a certain extent. But, like, there's this photo of myself and my cousin because we were born in the same month. And I was just covered in these red, like, dots everywhere, which... Not a great start, yeah. but like we've moved on from there. I mean, I still have eczema yeah. on my hands, but it's definitely more manageable. Um, and then similarly, like the race thing comes in for me because mm-hmm. my dad is my dad is colored and my mom is white. Mm. So then my sister and I look different. My sister looks more colored and I look more white. Mm. Like my sister looks exactly like my dad and I look very similar to my mom, but just with like a little bit of a darker complexion. Yeah. So it was something that was always compared with sure. the two of us. And even growing up, like my gran would say to my mom, oh, we must put SPF on that baby on to my sure. sister. Cause she was like, she can't get any darker. Sure. Um, my mom's mom, obviously, because my dad's yeah. mom was <laughs> kind of colored. So she was yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, so I think my relationship with my skin has grown and it's even the insecurities have grown yeah. weirdly. Mm. Like they evolve and they change. So then, mm. From the eczema, I used to have eczema on the insides of my arms yeah. as well. Yeah. And it always- bugged me. And I was always just like, oh, don't look at it in primary school. Um, but then in high school, my skin doesn't stretch well. Oh, it just, okay. It's just like, it I'm staying here. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you go down or up, yeah. I'm staying here. Yeah. 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 So yeah. then it became like, I literally got my first stretch mark in grade 12. And I had no idea that it was a stretch mark. Mm, I was sitting sure. with my friends and they were like, they were talking about, they had, they, they had these ones on the side. Yeah. And I was like... Oh no, because they were talking about how it starts mm. and I didn't have any stretch marks yet. Yeah. And then they were like, Oh, but no, that is a stretch mark. Because I lifted up my top and I was like, Is this is this a stretch mark? Yeah. And they were like, Yes. Yeah. Sure. Because it was sure. like red, and I was like, No, not, not me. me. Yeah. But then I've learned to like get used get comfortable. Get used to it or get comfortable with it. Is there any specific moment in your life that led to your career choices um i mean you advocate for 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 self acceptance self love mm. and obviously you're in the front you're on tv you're yeah. doing poetry is there a specific moment that led to you making that um career choice sure um i don't know i don't know if i could pinpoint to a specific moment um i always say that for me because i grew up in like a small village, right? Poverty-stricken village, right? So for me, it was always about breaking the cycles of poverty, um, you know? And I mean, I I think the arts and everything else found me along the way. But for me, it was either it's going to be academically or this or that. But yeah. whatever career choice was for me to just break out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think there's been moments along the way. I mean, even through like Essay's Got Talent, um, um, that opened doors for so many other things. Um, and then even moving into then the beauty space yeah. and the self-confidence space, um, I think that for me was then affirming that young girl um, mm. who struggled in terms of like body confidence and yeah. all of that. And so I don't want my sister or other kids to have to grow up like that. Yeah. I want them to be fully empowered yeah. growing up, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, just to piggyback on that, when did you realize that you are living in poverty yeah. and to make that almost a a thing of okay I have to break out of this yeah. because this is my circumstance and I think as kids you don't realize no. like you're yeah. just like yeah. this is what we yeah. have this is life yeah, yeah. I, it always amazes me right I'm like the younger, I mean, I think I'm still pretty smart but I think the younger self was so smart I was yeah. like I feel like I was a bit yeah that, that young girl was really really smart yeah. right I mean The entire community, we grew up at my grandmother's house where it's like aunts and uncles and this and that. And no one's working. The only person, the only source of income was then my grandmother and the pension, right? So from the meals you were having to the schools and everything else, right? But I think also my mom was a big inspiration, right? Um, Because 
my mom was the first generation to graduate and all of that, but even later on in life, right? Um, so I think my surroundings... And then for me, I was always a big dreamer, like from a young age. Like I lived in my head yeah. and I would like imagine, you know, and um, the reference points obviously used to be the people that like I would read about and yeah. the people on television. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yeah. Like, this, like, this is the life. Yeah. yeah. Like you're watching top billing and you're like, this this is the house that I want to live in, right? Sure. So from the young age, I was just always dreaming. Um, and then... Literally, from early as in primary school, I was already looking at like scholarships. I start, I knew wow. about scholarships. Sure. I was like, mom, we need to look into this. Let's look for schools um, in Joburg because Joburg was the big thing. I mean, yeah. you come from the small town, you want to go to Joburg, right? Um, so yeah, I think that little kid was very self-aware. Like I was aware of my surroundings and I knew that this is not the life I want. Yeah. Um, and I want to be the change yeah. for myself, for sure. my family, for my community. Yeah, and there's yeah. more. I yeah. love that. Tanda, you're a mom of three, um, and I've experienced two pregnancies. <laughs> One was very traumatic. For me, like, my skin was such a huge issue. I remember my, my whole career taking off at a time where I was physically changing. And for the first time in my life, I identified as ugly. Like, I never thought um, I'm an ugly girl or anything. I was always very, very confident. My parents were very affirming, and my environment was affirming. And then... My first pregnancy, everything changed. And now I'm in front of the camera. And so I want to know, um, how have your pregnancies been? And how did they affect your self-esteem and the changes in your skin from facially to even just the stretches, your breasts changing, all of those changes? How did it, how did it affect you and how did you deal? So I fell pregnant with my first child when I was 21. Yeah. And with that journey, I felt it came with a bit of shame. Yeah. It, yeah. it, it came with a lot of shame. A lot of shame. Um, although I'd finished university and I was working, I was still young. I was yeah. unmarried. Um, so for a lot of that part of pregnancy, when I see my skin changes, when I see my body changing, I felt like I couldn't really go to anyone, mm. um, you know, to talk about it mm. and say, can I expect this? Mm. Is this normal? Mm. Um, how do you, you know, how do you deal with this? So I think for the first pregnancy, I was very much dealing with everything by myself. Sure. Um, and I remember still like, after having my first baby and noticing like how my stomach changed, my, so my color of my skin was very dark, Yeah. right? And I kept... Scrubbing and scrubbing, and, you know. Really? I, no, I was like scrubbing, thinking sure. like maybe it's, I think maybe they put something on my tummy. You know, I didn't have the information. Wow. Uh, you know, yeah. bearing in mind that this was 2008. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't really have enough information. That actually was the inspiration for my blog to say, let me start having these conversations to tell women that, you know, this is, these are some of the things that you can expect. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, like my body didn't change that much after my first child. Yeah. Uh, with my second child, uh, my body and my skin stretched the most yeah um i carried quite big for my daughter uh and i have this ad abdominal separation one thing about right? daughters <laughs> <laughs> they will come, they will come. <laughs> yeah. and 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 my abdominal stretch so even for a long time afterwards you know still looking pregnant with your sure. skin still looking stretched yeah. um having more and more stretch marks because i um you know gained more weight mm. but i think i was at a place in my life where i was a, a bit more confident um and you know slowly even online started you know sharing pictures of my stretch marks mm. uh, to say sure. this is what motherhood looks like yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the real. because yeah. for some reason people just don't expect mothers to change you know you mm. go through this whole journey of bringing life but we expect it to look to feel to be the exact the same, same way Hey, yeah. that we were before, um, you know, and you've just gone through this whole transformational journey. Sure. Um, you know, there's still things that you wish, oh, I wish I could change this, I wish I could do that. Uh, but I think overall, the acceptance of yeah. the body, I always think, okay, how would I want my daughter to feel about her body? Yeah. How would I want her to feel about herself and, you yeah, know, trying to be good. that example? Yeah. But it doesn't mean that I don't feel certain things, yeah. you know, mm. at, at certain times. But um, really, I think my skin is just ebbed, flowed, yeah. stretched, um, so much and it's still like it's just constant work um and it's part of the self-love journey right that you just have to each and every day yeah. um, affirm yourself um you know and just accept who you are i also yeah. think part of the journey now i'm starting to think is not to get to a place where you love everything because i feel like mm. at, at some point that was the goal like mm. you need to get yeah. to a place mm. where you just love everything and everything's perfect and i think that in itself is flawed because yeah. Yeah. 
It's not realistic. We're, it's not realistic. Um, we're always, there's going to be things that we're just not happy about and that should be normalized. It doesn't mm. change your self-perception or yeah. your self-confidence. It's just, I wish I had better toes. Mm. <laughs> I just wish I had better fingers. Yeah. Is it going to affect my whole day? No, but it's just the truth of how I I feel right now. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Lachelle, you champion body positivity, right? And do you recall that moment when you realized that, oh, actually, I'm making an impact. This is an actual thing. Like, when you started out, were you going for, I'm going to show body positivity, or you got to a point where you said, you know what, this is me, and take it as it is, and then you just realize that, oh, okay, this is actually important. I definitely didn't go into it expecting that this is where my content would go, what I would be sharing online. I started out doing beauty and like makeup content Mm. and then it's just evolved from there and my content is now just an extension of me. It's just sharing my personality and my life and everything else with a portion of the world. Yeah. (laughs) A little bit of the world. Um, I didn't go into it already confident in my body Mm. I was sharing little things so I hated going to the beach for so long because I didn't like okay I didn't like the sand but mostly deep down what I reflected on it it was more just I didn't like how I felt at the beach I felt like people were looking at me or I wasn't the skinniest person or the most beautiful person or my skin didn't look quite as smooth as that person's Mm. um but then I realized that I just loved being in the ocean. Yeah. And so I started sharing that, not thinking that it was going to be this like body positive activism thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was just me like actually learning to love certain parts of myself or accept certain parts of myself. It wasn't love at that point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't, I didn't even think because I wasn't following any body, body positive people, mm-hmm. like not one. So all you're just seeing is people who I was, look the way you're supposedly my supposed aspirational to be aspirational body. Mm, yeah. When in reality, I'm never going to have legs like mm. Naomi Campbell. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. They're so short. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is what I've got to work with, yeah. you know? Um, and I, I was just learning to figure out my body and like mm. accept certain things. And then people would send me a message and be like, oh, it's so nice to see someone that looks like me sure. in a costume at the beach just living their life and being happy. Yeah. And initially I hated it because it felt, as much as they were seeing themselves in me, um, I felt like it was a negative. Mm, because I, I wanted someone skinny to be like, you look like me, sure. but yeah. like, listen, that was not going to happen. Yeah, It was not going to happen. And I, I worked so hard in my teens to be like skinny, skinny mm. but it's just, it's not my build. You spoke about, you spent most of your high school trying to be skinny. So mm. I can understand, I can imagine you had a thing with diet culture, right? And how is that now? Because I feel like we try to tell stories of, oh, I've overcome now and now I'm just happy and I'm not conscious, but are, are you there yet or do you still find yourself in moments where you feel like, actually, maybe it's time now. Let's try to change this body again. Or are you, like, where where are you at? Um, yeah, I don't think there's a, a destination of, like, there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't yeah. think there's that end destination of, mm. I love everything about my body and about my life and about my personality. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think, I think we're always evolving and changing yeah, and that's the goal growing. for me. Yeah. But um, to answer your question, I'm, I think I'm currently in the phase where I'm like, I can learn to love my body and embrace my body, but still look after it, yes. Yes. still be healthy, still yes. exercise, still yes. feel comfortable in spaces like the gym. Because yeah. for so long, I would just avoid the gym sure. because I didn't see people that look like me because people online will be like, not to me, because I have a great audience. Yeah. They're so nice. <laughs> um they would write in comments of like plus size women in the comments be like, you need to go to the gym. Sure. But then when someone is in the gym, they're like, oh, you're too fat to be at the gym. Mm-hmm. And you're like, mm-hmm. okay, where, so, so, where what, should I go? <laughs> should I go? Should I not go? Sure. Like, how do I f- not fix this problem? Because it's not a problem that needs to be fixed. It's just, I want to find the healthiest version of myself, mm-hmm. healthy mentally Me. yeah. and physically. Because mm-hmm. sometimes 
striving for that perfect physical, like optimized version of yourself means that you're neglecting the mental the side mental, of things. Yeah. 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 And so I feel like for the last five, six years, I've been working a lot on the mental side of things yeah. and mm. trying to figure out why do I think I need to wear vertical stripes only? Sure. Or why should I, you know, cinch in the waist or cover up these parts of my bodies? Mm. Um, so I worked on the mental and now I'm like, I finally feel like I can work on the physical in a healthy way and not like starve myself for the entire day, yeah. not go back to my high school yeah. version of myself yeah. where that – the thing is that that voice does still come up. It yeah, does still say to me when I, my stomach is rumbling and it's 4 p.m. and I'm like, I haven't eaten. Should I just drink the water? Should I just have sure, water rather? Sure. Like my brain will still do yeah, that to me. Yeah. And I have to, I have to either fight it or decide that I'm going to fall back into that version of myself, which I'm just, I'm not willing to it's do. Not worth it. Yeah. 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 It's not worth it. For me, it's worth um filters mm. i realized and it and i've never used like dramatic filters just because i don't like them mm. um but i realized a time in my life where every time i open my instagram i automatically go to filters yeah and it became so normal and normal and then uh, there was a specific moment where i went and i didn't want to use a filter and i was just like whoa <laughs> who and is i this? who's this yeah. and i literally decided in that moment from now on and i think Good. it's about a year or two now that I will not use filters um, anymore because it's just distorting how we feel and how we look. Nothing wrong with filters. Mm. Filters are great. They're funny. Mm. They're amazing. Great. But when it starts impacting your everyday life, yeah. then it's a problem. I think there are those filters where it's fun and cute and whatever mm. and you use them that's how it random. started. Like we had like bunnies. And yeah. Yes. And the next this thing we could do it. Eyelashes. And eyelashes all the time. And it's yeah. like the ones that hurt the most, I think are the most, they make the most subtle changes to your face. Yeah. Like you're just, you're looking yeah. and you're like, this is me. Yeah. yeah. But then actually your skin is blurred. Your face is slightly slimmed. Yeah. Mm. Your lips are just a little, just a little bit little bigger. Pack. Yeah. Just, yeah. Like, just that tiniest bit. Yeah. 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 And it makes you question, should I rather look like this is just my best sure. version mm. on a daily basis having that available to you is tough unrealistic mm. but like growing up in the spotlight <laughs> um from such a young age and as an adult i've been sort of in the spotlight on social media for like five years and i'm feeling the impact right mm. and i'm like okay it's 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 a lot because you constantly almost have to show up as the best the filter version yeah. of mm. you how did it impact your self-esteem? Especially if you're like on screen and you've got makeup on. Yeah. Um, but it's like makeup that's not makeup. But like yeah. it's, it's a nicer version of you. And then you have to go out in your everyday life and it's like, oh, there's no set. There's, yeah. no, cr there's no crew anymore. So how has it impacted your self-esteem and your self-confidence? Sure. Um, I would say for me, in terms of growing up in the spotlight and my relationship with... Um, self-esteem, I actually feel like it forced me to sort of confront my ah, insecurities, if anything, okay. right? Um, so, because also with being in the spotlight, there's so many opinions yeah. on yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, how you're supposed to Yeah, be. literally people were telling, I mean, when I started acting, what was that? Like a 13, 14-year-old Bukhali, like, you're ugly, you're this, you're that, on social oh media. Gosh. So, People have so much to say about you, about the way you look, about your work and everything. So I think for me, it got to a point where I was like, okay, I have to recognize that the, the, the voices will always be there. People sure. will always have an opinion. So I actually have to do the internal work yeah. so that all those people's opinions don't yeah. affect yeah. me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. And I would have easily quit because then someone told me I'm actually not that great at poetry that I could have really believe that opinion, right? Sure. Or someone told yeah. me my face is not for TV. So I could have believed sure. that, right? So I think for me, it really, it, that was the push, like the, the accelerating force to confronting all these insecurities that I feel yeah. like I just packed away with my childhood. I was like, yeah, okay, I don't need to be beautiful. Yeah. Like, that's fine. Yeah. But now it was then streaming into my work and into this mm. life that I want, mm. right? Which is in the spotlight. Mm. Um, or what comes with what I want, which yeah. is being a creative, yeah. but yeah. What does that look like, the confronting of your insecurities? Um, and I'm asking because for me, 
there was a time where I think I went on a challenge where I've had to look in the mirror. Yeah. And, I was about to say. And a, like yeah. I had to appreciate. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. this time. You know, that <laughs> delivered yeah. those babies. Mm-hmm. And like the first three days, it's daunting. Yeah. It's like, girl, who are you trying to play? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But for you, how did that, how did, how does it even look like right now? Is it an ongoing thing? Or yeah. Or do you do like 10 day challenges like I do? Yeah. It firstly started with those things that so many people think were being silly, even when we share on social media. It's even things that I share even with my little sisters, like those silly things such as affirming yourself every single day. Like sometimes you're like, I love my forehead, but back then I hated my forehead. But when you say it by the 10th time, you actually start to believe. It's like something even in your brain switches, right? So it started with those small things such as affirming oneself and being able to just look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am beautiful or like standing completely naked. That's like, that's like being able to be so vulnerable, (laughs) stand naked in front of the mirror and pick on the parts that before you used to pick on and say negative things towards and say positive things towards, right? Um, But I think the bulk work for me happened um, through journaling. I think journaling Mm. for me was life-changing. I think because of poetry and writing, Mm. words always carry so much resonance for me, right? So I started to fully be honest about all these things that I was feeling Mm. and journaling them out, Mm. right? And acknowledging that all of these things are feelings and emotions and Mm. ideas that I created in my head. And it's okay. As I'm writing, I'm releasing them onto the paper, right? Um, And not every day is perfect. I mean, tomorrow someone else might say something and maybe that might affect me, but it doesn't affect me the way, like it doesn't alter how I think of myself now. I acknowledge that that's just an opinion. And the the emotion I feel is sad, but tomorrow is a different day type yeah. thing, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And I can easily disregard that because I'm now, I've created a strong foundation of mm. self and knowing myself and my own identity. I love um, that. So yeah, but those small little things, like find the things that work for you. Some people do it through like, I had a friend who listened to like music that was related to like, just like positivity and everything sure. and just because yeah. it's all of these things that you consume all of these mm. if you have to cut out social media then, then do, do that, that as yeah. well right because it's all here yeah, it's, it's all mental it. yeah uh, yeah I um in the beginning of the year I had picked up a bit of weight and I pick up my weight um like on in my upper body mm-hmm. right and and I used to love crop tops and like um, uh, spaghetti straps, you know, yeah. straps and everything but then I started watching my podcast back like when I wear something that shows my full arm then I'm conscious and then it affects how I do my work and I said you know the honesty is that maybe they're not that bad and maybe I'm exaggerating however I don't feel comfortable and so I just stopped wearing stuff that makes me feel uncomfortable mm. while I go to the gym work on my back mm. um, and just appreciate it but the truth is I'm not comfortable with how it looks. I don't like it. But when I wear a top that is flattering, I'm like, okay, girl, you're doing well. And that's just the balance. And that's why I said in the beginning, maybe the goal is not to reach this place where everything is perfect, yeah. but it's it's like an yeah. ebb and flow. It's like, okay, yeah. I, I like this, but I also don't like this. Yeah. And it's okay. It doesn't change me. It doesn't make me an ungrateful person. Yeah. It's just the reality of where I am. But I can do that without every day saying, oh, you should be better. Look at this one, mm. you know? I think when comparison comes in, then yeah. it's like, it, it's it's a problem. But yeah. when we face ourselves head on, like is it self-awareness? Self the truth. It's true. Yeah, just yeah. acknowledge it to yourself. Mm. Yeah. Tando, and, and, and going back to what Bukhali was talking about, growing up in the spotlight, your kids mm. are on um, social media, right? Yeah. And there's such a, there's a, for me, it's, it's a beautiful but a tricky aspect. It's mm. like, we need that representation. We need to see black boys and a black girl um, thriving and being confident. However, how is it impacting them, their self-esteem, or are they not there yet? And when is a good time to start talking to them about, look, you're in the you're in the spotlight um and also you have to take care of yourself you're growing up your son is a teenager when do those conversations start taking place sure i think definitely in the pre-teen phase i think that's when i noticed like my son was now uh can you please buy me deodorant can you know can is you, he the one who's yes. having the conversation <laughs> and okay. the, you know you you pick up those things and you say okay let's have the conversation this is what's happening um with your body this mm. is you know the changes that you can expect but i think in terms of the the social media element i think my son's a teenager now so yeah. you know a couple of years ago we started having the conversation saying this is my platform this is what it does this is 
what it means. Yeah. And you know what? If I've got an opportunity for you, you can choose if you want to take it or not. Um, more more these days, he's choosing not to. I sure. think he's just, yeah, he's developing into his own person. Yeah. He's turning 15. Um, so oh. the, I think that's the, the education part, I think, is very important. Yeah. And I always say that I don't want my children to learn about things of the world mm. from the world. From the world. Yeah. Yeah. Let the conversation yeah. like start at home. Let's have the open um you know, conversations from home and then you ask me the question. I want to be the the, the person that actually provides the right information mm. uh, because especially online, um, you know, looking at, you know, how people will say this is how you look and yeah. it just blur, blur, just, blur, blur out their, their yeah. opinions, yeah. you know. Um, so I think that that conversation and that esteem building really starts uh, from home. Yeah. And I think when kids have you know, are at an age where you can have a conversation with them, um, you know, whether or not they want to, um, then I think that's very important and it's important to respect that. Yeah. Mm. Um, and just let them be. Yeah. Yeah. How old's your daughter? She's seven. And when have you started having a, this is a skincare routine conversation? Because I realize with my daughter, she loves, um, she loves being clean, right? Yeah. And so she came into my room when I was taking a shower and she was telling me that she put um, body lotion and spray on her doll. Is this an actual good thing? Because clean, sure. like, cleanliness is very, very important for our children. But where is also the line of, okay, mom, you're, it's not that, it's not that, mm. it, that, it, that important. So the conversation with your daughter, where you're at since she's like a seven, eight year old. Yeah. Okay, so she loves like copying, oh, okay. <laughs> doing whatever mom's yeah. doing. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, the showers, the, the you know the daily routine, she yeah. she really loves doing. But I think just in t- teaching about the cleanliness has just come from her. I think mostly watching me ah. um, and her like knowing the habits. Like I want to try that. Mm. Um, and just you know, th- I was just thinking about Dove for a moment there. That um, my aunt, yeah. uh, who was much younger than the rest of my aunts, she was she felt like more like a cousin. Yes. Um, I remember she had freckles. So she looked very different, you know, in our family. And she's the person that introduced me to the Dove Beauty Bar. Mm-hmm. But I think for me, just lo- just thinking back now as a child, I looked at that and I thought, you know, she's just a beautiful woman. And mm. and now as an adult, I probably think she probably had, you know, some insecurities, insecurities about yeah. it. Yeah. But I just always just referenced and, and just thought about her in, you know, in that um and that light with yeah. with the with the beauty bar, and I just always think, okay, my daughter's watching me, mm. and you know, um, I need to be that example. Yeah. Mm. So we talk about it, you know, okay. um, you know, this is the cleanliness, uh, you know, these are the habits that we have, and they, you know, school reinforces it. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's also part of our fun time. Okay. So she'll always say, like, okay, let's have a spa date yeah. at, yeah. at home spa, yeah. and then we take our soap and yeah. we just yeah okay. make foam. But I, I just think that she's she's into it yeah. <laughs> yeah. and she's aware and and she's really really interested in like oh what does mommy do and um, yeah trying One to mimic thing about that. Our kids, we I don't know what we were doing. Oh, my kid had a a, a school concert and so whenever something ha- important is happening, I I like do my nails. Oh. my nails are my thing. Yes. And she said to me, oh mom, I need to go do my nails. Oh. I'm just like, I'm There's a concert. <laughs> Because I'll take her once in a while, yeah. like it's our thing, like what you're saying, yeah. like yeah. mommy, you know, when you, you see your mom and it's like bonding time, yeah. so we do it once in a while, but now she wants it to be a month, I think, <laughs> too. And you're like, yeah. Yeah. I got an occasion, <laughs> but Lali, what's your morning routine, your morning routine, and your skincare routine, yeah. I think for me, because of how fast paced our industry is, right, I always see convenience. Like I'm like something that can like work and work fast and I'm out of the house, right? Um, And for me, one key thing that I always recommend, even with my friends, is definitely the Dove um, beauty bar, right? Because you can use it on your face, you can use it on your body. So it works and it cleanses and it's like so nourishing. It smells so good. So that that for me is the one thing that I'm like, yeah, in, out, I'm good. Yeah, She's a good travel buddy. Yes. 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 So convenient. (laughs) You can pack it into anything. Yeah. Yeah. What is like the one thing you should, you never ever leave out when nourishing and taking care of your skin? One thing I never leave out is cleansing my skin because I feel like it's when you're a mom or you're busy, it's the first thing that that you don't do because you're like, I'm lazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just want to lie down and wash my face. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So that's number one. But even just in the shower, same thing, like a good body wash that 
makes me feel a specific way. I love what you said about having a different scent, scent yeah, for every different feeling, <laughs> every feeling that you need because yeah. we have enough. Yeah. yeah, there's so many to choose from. Yeah, um, but mine is 100 like my top tip for myself and specific to my body care yeah. because I'm I'm like a reptile dry, oh. like very dry. Yeah. That's one yeah. thing my dad passed down. Didn't yeah. pass down the pigmentation, <laughs> but he passed down the dry <laughs> skin. The skin, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I, my husband doesn't understand it. But I'm moisturized all the time. Yeah. Mm. And I mean, it works. My yeah. skin is Your smooth skin and beautiful. Amazing. My mom, even, is like, every time she touches me, she's like, girl, skin is so, so nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But moisturizing, making sure that I am, my well, skin is nourished yeah. so that yeah. it can stretch or do what it grow or do. get smaller, whatever <laughs> it does. Yeah. It's nourished, so it can do that. Love that. We're going to go to our wall of wisdom, uh, and each of you are going to answer this question. Okay. So you're going to give me a podcast you re- recommend book you recommend and an Instagram account that you recommend oh heck so okay okay a podcast I recommend is Wisdom and Wellness come on you're not allowed to (laughs) recommend (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think another one that I love I love um, Joyce Meyer Joyce Meyer yeah yeah Yeah. Um, and then a book a book that is so hard. Oh my goodness, I read tons of books. Um, Love it. What a flex. But I think The Alchemist. I don't know. <gasps> yes. There's something there. Like the Alchemist. Yeah, I think everyone has to read it yeah. just once. But the time time. matters. It yeah. matters when you read it. Yeah. 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 Sometimes yeah. you're just not ready for yeah. it, but you should read it, yeah. I think. Yeah. And then an Instagram account. Yeah. That's so tricky. Oh my goodness. That you enjoy. That just makes you feel like, whoa. Give yeah, I love dine with Neil. Dine with Neil. Okay. Yeah, okay. I love her cooking. Yeah, you, go, you love your food. I love food. <laughs> I do. Okay. Yeah, so I think dine with Neil. Love it. Yeah. Tando? I have to think about the Instagram one. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think my explore page is full of more your wellness kind of quotes yeah. uh, and things that I really enjoy that. Yeah. A book I'd recommend Awakened by Nunguleo Kopoto. Um, The book is going to be very hard. Okay. I literally, I'm in my mind, I'm flicking through all Kindle my books. my Kindle books. <laughs> <laughs> um, But I recently read a book. I, I, you'll have to put it somewhere. Okay. Okay. I don't know where. Yeah. Somewhere. somewhere. I'll send it to you afterwards because I okay. don't know the name. But it was about a woman who is child free and happy with the decision sure because it was in a phase where I was trying to figure it out and yeah. it was just interesting to see it from like in a like a fictional character mm. and she's actually happy with the decision um and a podcast is probably Brene Brown's podcast yes. because I have hugely had to learn how to be vulnerable and yeah. be okay with vulnerability and to teach the people around me how to do it as well sure um in a positive way non-manipulative way yeah because sure. you can use vulnerability as a manipulative mm-hmm. yeah yeah um what was the last one book instagram instagram, instagram. instagram. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> the button <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what what um, button that's tiktok oh the button <laughs> it's i mean is it on instagram it's gonna fade no no okay. it, no that wasn't my answer oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> um i it seems kind of cliche because she doesn't post as much, but like Ashley Graham, just for the oh. sake of when I first started creating body positive content, yeah. Yeah. I found her and I was like, this is this amazing. Is this she's woman- by my podcast. Really? Yeah, when I saw her podcast, I was like, oh, that's I'm what I want to do. Yeah. That's she's what I just do. so unapologetically herself. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't seem like, even after she's had, she's had her, she had her son and then she had the twins, yeah. right? Yeah. I think it was... Yeah, do you, yeah, I think so, somewhere. Yeah. And her body changed so much. Yeah. And I was just, I was watching, I was on the edge of my seat after she had the twins because I was so intrigued about how her stance on body positivity like, or like what her changes in her body would look like and how she would handle them. And it was just so beautiful to love her. I want to quickly sit on, you mentioned the, the book um, about reading a, on a fictional character about the decision of not having kids and we spoke about it in Cape Town so I'm glad you mentioned that how was that journey and I know we ended but I feel like I need to touch on it because it's such an important conversation how has that journey been have you found yourself convincing um that "Mm, I should probably have kids because when I'm like 50 years old I'll be lonely and all the voices around me and everything I see is just kids 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 or have you always been like honestly this is my truth and I'm sticking by it um no I 
growing up and even when we got married, yeah. not wearing my ring, but I am married. She's married. Um, <laughs> married. You're not going through anything. You're good. <laughs> People will question, eh? She's good. <laughs> um, we always had this thing of we're going to wait, we're going to see within three to five years yeah. if we're ready to have kids. Mm. So my... Because the people that I was surrounded with were friends and their parents. Yeah. My mom didn't have any friends that didn't have kids. Yeah. So it's a completely new environment for me. And I think there's a lot more people speaking about it now, which is really helpful because then you feel less alone. Yeah. And I I love children, Mm. but I also, I don't know that I'm going to have my best life if I choose to have my own kids. Sure. I love my sister's kids. Mm. Like I love them like they're my own kids. And the reality is with her being across the world in America, I wouldn't have been able to go and, vis- go and visit and help when she had both of her children yeah. if I had kids of my own. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to go mm. and see them for Christmas. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to be there for birthdays mm. because my life would be rooted to these tiny humans. Yeah. And yes, I want to see what my husband and I would look like in a tiny human, but like, do I want it enough to commit to this lifelong yeah. decision. It's yeah. not until 18 or 21. Yeah. You have it's these like kids your whole, your whole life. life. Yeah. And also even just the tying back to the skin you're in, like it's learning to love this new version of yourself mm. instead of consistently being like, but you were 21. You mm. only ever thought of having this family. Mm. Yeah. But you at 30 or thir- 31, I just turned 31. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's okay that I want something different and I'm I'm happy to to embrace and love all these different versions of myself and yeah. the skin that I'm in and yeah yeah I think it's such an important um, conversation and not just about not having kids but the kids conversation I think on on social media there's a whole of when are you having the next one when are you having the next yeah. one and I get that people can come from a, a good place but there's so many factors to consider it's not just the cute photo shoots it's does my lifestyle mm. fit this? Yeah. Am I willing to make the sacrifice? Mm. Can I actually afford it? Am I going to have the emotional capacity to raise yeah. amazing children? So I feel like it's conversations we should really start having versus 10, 15 years ago where it's just like, when are you having a child? Yeah. And that's, yeah. and that's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 And that's yeah. it. It's like, can, do you have the ability to yeah. raise an emotionally... I mean, things are going to happen. We're going to hurt our kids, whatever. Um, but for the most part, like... You yeah. want to instill great things great in your things, children yeah. rather than just hoping it's going to be fine. Yeah, exactly. Um, my last question from my wall of wisdom. This one looks a little different than it normally does. Mm-hmm. You're going to finish the sentence. My skin. Is growing, evolving, changing, just like I am. Ah, my skin is growing, evolving, changing, just like I am. Sure, that's liberating. That's liberating. We're not stuck. We're not stuck. We're moving. And nothing gets stuck. Yeah. The only constant thing is change. Yeah. 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 my skin. My skin carries me through life's journey and experiences Mm. and allows me to fully... Mm. Sure. Now I'm taking it long, you know what I'm saying? Now yeah. I'm thinking of poetically. But yes, I think <laughs> my skin allows yeah. me to function and exist. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's a nice way of looking at our skin, that it's more than just the aesthetic of it, but it's yeah. it carries us. Yeah. It's, it's our largest it's organ. It's our container. Yeah. yeah. Shall? Um I think my skin is inclusive. Mm. Mm. It's not inclusive sure. of every race or every skin type or whatever, but it is inclusive to some people to see someone that has stretch marks or eczema yeah. or tattoos. Yeah. yeah, not everyone loves them, which is fine. Yeah, um, I think I like. Yeah, my inclusive. skin is inclusive. Love that, ladies. Thank you so much for this conversation. I know it feels so short. Like, I feel like I want to go, but I just feel yeah. like, guys, we've been going for more than an hour. But um, thank you so much. And thank you to Dove for partnering with us on such important conversations where we wish we had these conversations growing up, that it's okay to be different, like you mm. said. Um, it's okay to grow in your skin. Um, it's okay to not feel good about it all the time, but more than anything, it carries us. We love it and we need to take care of it. And so I hope you enjoyed this episode from the Wisdom and Wellness podcast. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. Thank Bye. you so much. <laughs>